And today's Mail on Sunday front page was just a disgrace. There in the copy, that President Zelensky had said that I was infected with Putinism. Well, it's just not true. What I did say to Nick Robinson on the BBC the other day was that, yes, 10, days, 10 years ago, I predicted there'd be a war in Ukraine because I thought that Putin, a bad man, clever, but a bad man, would use EU and NATO expansion as a reason to say to his people, look, they're coming for us. We've got to go back the other way. Now, it's possible he'd have invaded Ukraine anyway. I don't know. But certainly we gave him a very good reason. I have never supported or been an ally of his administration in any way at all. I've never even been to Russia, frankly. But the truth of the story was that Zelensky had said nothing. That a BBC reporter had a quote, but that my name wasn't even in the quote. In fact, the BBC doubted the story so much, they didn't bother to run it themselves. But for the Mail on Sunday, this was enough to go on the front page. And I'm so angry about this sheer dishonesty about a breach of the editor's code, but I've gone to Carter Ruck, we've instructed Carter Ruck, and they have written already to the Mail on Sunday. But not content with that, we then get a message this afternoon from the Daily Mail, who say to us that they, the Daily Mail, have been in touch with the Kremlin. Yes, that's right, the Daily Mail, getting in touch with the Kremlin, and they say that someone who works with the Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov, described me as an ally. And they plan this to be the next big story tomorrow. Now, they know damn well I've never been an ally of the administration. I very much doubt the quote is even truthful. But that's what they intend to do. So the Mail, you know, Daily Mail are colluding, collaborating with the Kremlin. But the Daily Mail are intending to put out Russian propaganda, if indeed that was the accurate quote. I doubt it very much indeed, given the condemnation uh, that the, the countries get for interfering publicly in other elections. I doubt it's true. But that is what the Mail are up to. Now, they're doing this to protect their friends, the dying Conservative Party, because that's what it is. It's dying. This is my video update on this Sunday afternoon, June the 23rd. Let's talk about some news. And how about, how about an update, actually, on the Cyprus Nasrallah story that I talked about a couple of days ago from Belgrade. Cofix. That's the coffee for the day. Cofix. So... Let's, uh, let's do an update on the, the threat from Nasrallah. And we have a response to that threat from the UK Foreign Ministry. That's right, the UK Foreign Ministry. Why is the UK Foreign Ministry responding to Nasrallah's statement where he threatened Cyprus. Well, because as I reported in my video a couple of days ago, Nasrallah's threat was not directed towards Cyprus, but it was actually directed towards the British air bases in Cyprus. So here is, here is what the British Foreign Office spokesperson said. The Foreign Office spokesperson. This is what they said. The sovereign base areas in Cyprus have not hosted any kind of Israeli military personnel or aircraft since before the beginning of the war between Israel and Hamas. A Foreign Office spokesperson said. The British bases in Cyprus have not hosted any Israeli Military aircraft or personnel, a UK government source said on Saturday in statements to the Cyprus news agency, the unnamed source was asked to comment on Hezbollah's threat against Cyprus. So that's an official statement from an unnamed source at the Foreign Office in the UK, which is claiming that that British bases have not hosted Israeli aircraft. So no doubt, 
the Cyprus government. They spoke with the UK and they told the UK, issue a statement, please, because we don't want to be dragged into, into a war. We don't want to be attacked by Hezbollah. Because the Cyprus government, they took Nasrallah's threat seriously. And, uh, and that's why you're getting this statement from the, the Foreign Office, which confirms my reporting as well from a couple of days ago, which was that, that these threats were directed at the British overseas territories in Cyprus, the British air bases. And that diplomacy was being used and is going to be used in order to de-escalate. So this is part of the diplomacy and the de-escalation process so that Cyprus does not get dragged into this conflict because of the British air bases. Anyway, that's the update on that story. And while we're talking about the Middle East region, we have this Twitter X post from Douglas McGregor breaking. Unconfirmed reports indicate the USS Theodore Roosevelt streaming towards Israel in the Mediterranean Sea. War with Hezbollah now expected. So we have the Roosevelt unconfirmed heading towards the Middle East. I believe I reported a couple of days ago that the Gerald Ford aircraft carrier group was also making its way towards the Middle East, towards the Mediterranean. And I think we had reports today that the Eisenhower was once again attacked by the Yemen Houthis, though the U.S. government, from what I understand, or the Pentagon, denied these claims. But the Eisenhower, from what I understand, is leaving the region. So that kind of, that kind of hints at the, the fact that the Yemen Houthis did manage to, to hit the Eisenhower, and at a very mini, minimum, they have been successful in forcing the Eisenhower to leave the region. I believe it was, at the time, it was uh, in the Red Sea. Anyway, that's an update with regards to all of these aircraft carriers coming and going into the region. Coming and going. That must get very, very expensive. War, war is expensive, everyone. War is expensive, and war needs a lot of money. It needs a lot of money, and it needs a lot of investment. And we have, we have this report that the German MIC company, military company known as Rhein, Rhein Metal, they've signed a record-breaking contract to produce artillery shells, weapons and artillery shells. Artillery shells for, for Germany, artillery shells for the Netherlands, for, for German, Danish, Dutch, and for Estonia and Estonian stocks, as well as to support Ukraine in its defensive struggle. Rhein Metal announced a contract on Thursday stating that the 8.5 billion euro order is the largest in the company's 135 year history. Rhein Metal did not state how many shells would be made for this price, but said that the ammunition would be used to replenish all of the, the stocks of the countries I just mentioned. By the way, the uh, the artillery shells for Ukraine, those are going to be paid for by Germany. Germany's going to pick up the tab for the shells for Ukraine. War is expensive. <laughs> it's expensive. It needs a lot of money. It needs a lot of investment. It's good to be in the war business nowadays, isn't it, huh? They are making a lot of money. The largest contract 
in the company's 135 year history to produce artillery shells. Wow. So since we're sticking on the subject of artillery shells, we have to talk about this Financial Times article with the title, Serbia turns a blind eye to its ammunition ending up in Ukraine. Moscow friendly Belgrade exported about 800 million euros of shells to Western allies since 2022. Oh boy, the Financial Times. They're trying to cause division between Serbia and Russia. Division between Moscow and Belgrade. That is what the Financial Times is trying to do here. Let's read some of what the Financial Times is reporting. This is part, this is from Vucic, by the way. Here's a statement from Vucic, who was, uh, was quoted by the Financial Times. This is part of our economic revival and important for us. Yes, we do export our ammunition, Vucic said. We cannot export to Ukraine or to Russia, but we have, we have had many contracts with Americans, Spaniards, Czechs, others. What they do with that in the end is their job. According to the president, Belgrade has no control over its arms or ammunition once it is sold. That's not my job, he told the Financial Times. My job is to secure the fact that we deal legally with our ammunition, that we sell it. I need to take care of my people. And that's it, according to Vucic. Belgrade has friends both in Moscow and Kiev. According to the Financial Times, turning Belgrade away from Moscow and pushing it towards supporting Kiev has been one of the major goals set by the West over the past years. Europe and the U.S. have worked for years to distance Vucic from Putin, a Western diplomat told the Financial Times. To distance Vucic from Putin, to distance Belgrade from Moscow. Interesting that the Financial Times is putting out this article, this interview with Vucic and this article, at the same time that Putin made his trip to North Korea. And it is rumored that uh, that's something like five million shells have been given or are going to be given to to Russia from North Korea. That's a rumor, but probably a, a, an accurate or credible uh, rumor. And now you have 800 million euros of shells since 2022. This is since 2022 that have been sold from Serbia to um, the United States, let's just say. Vucic names a number of countries that he has contracts with, Spain, the US, Czech Republic. And then these weapons end up in Ukraine. Who, who could have guessed that? Who could have thought that? Of course they end up in Ukraine. Is Serbia doing anything wrong? No. These are legal contracts. They're selling the artillery shells to these countries. They're not doing anything wrong. With, would Russia prefer, or actually, let me say this. Does Russia know that Serbia is selling artillery shells to Spain and the United States? Absolutely. Does Russia know that these artillery shells eventually make their way to Ukraine? Absolutely. Would Russia prefer that this didn't happen? Sure, but does Russia understand that this is reality? This is the weapons business? Yes. This is the weapons business. This is reality. So that is the article from the Financial Times. I imagine that, that putting out this article, maybe it's also, it also serves a purpose of not only trying to, to damage the relationship between Serbia and Russia, which will never, never be successful. Never, ever, never, ever, ever, ever. Sorry, Miss Jackson. But uh, it may also serve the purpose of, of maybe damaging Vucic a, a bit as well at home. Because I imagine there will be, this is just a guess, I imagine there will be 
a part of of society in Serbia that that reads this Financial Times article and is not going to be happy with with these quotes from from Vucic. So that's also a possibility, a purpose for for the Financial Times posting this article, which was an interview of Vucic. He's quoted here. He's quoted in this article saying what what he said. We're selling our artillery shells and if they end up in Ukraine, what can we do? That's the nature of the business, the nature of the beast. So that is that is Vucic and the Financial Times. And Germany, Germany is telling Ukrainians in Germany that they have to either find a job or go home, which is really Germany trying to figure out ways to, to send Ukrainian men to the front lines in, uh, in Ukraine. Ukrainian men who have migrated to Germany, trying to get them to, to go back to Ukraine and, and be annihilated by the Russian military because Ukraine is running short of soldiers. This is, this is Germany's roundabout way of, of trying to, to accomplish this. I believe it was a German parliament member, Alexander Dobrindt. Alexander Dobrindt, that's the guy. He wants migrants to stop relying on Berlin's generous welfare benefits or go home. With friends like Germany, Ukraine, who needs enemies, right? So there were uh, missile strikes, I believe, this morning. I'm not sure how, how many missiles were launched in Ukraine, towards Kiev, actually. I read four Calibra missiles and, and drones, but, but I'm not quite sure exactly how big of a missile strike this was or what the target was. I think I read reports saying that the Russians were going after military facilities in Kiev, different kinds of trams. You got modern trams, you got old, old style, classic trams. Anyway, uh, Klitschko, Klitschko said, said that the, that the explosions, or he wrote in Telegram, the explosions can be heard in Kiev, and he advised citizens to take cover. That is what Vitali Klitschko, the mayor of Kiev, said. I guess as the day goes along, we'll find out exactly what, what the purpose of, of these missile strikes into Kiev were all about, or we'll get confirmation from the Russian Ministry of Defense that the Russians were indeed targeting military facilities, or maybe they were targeting energy infrastructure, I don't know. What else, everybody? What else on this Sunday? Let's see. Trump. Trump was speaking in Philadelphia, right? He said he's going to build an iron dome, a big, beautiful iron dome to cover all of the, all of the U.S., huh? Interesting, <laughs> interesting statement from Trump. He also talked about Biden and uh, how Biden is, is already preparing for the debate. And this is confirmed news, by the way, that Biden, I believe he went to Camp David, I think. And uh, he went there actually a couple of days ago. So he's taking one week pretty much to prepare for the debate. What have I been saying in my videos? <laughs> I said he needs three weeks, but he had to travel to Normandy and, and do some other stuff and, uh, and go to, to L.A. and hang out with Obama and Jimmy Kimmel, freeze up a little bit here and there. And uh, now he is being prepared. The mainstream media says he's preparing for the debate, but I think a more accurate way to describe what's going on is that they are preparing <laughs> Biden for the debate, whatever that means. <laughs> Who knows what that means? I, I always have a picture in my head. I'm picturing something out of, out of Aliens where Ripley was in the, 
in the sleeping pod or something like that. I don't know. That's what I picture. They put Biden in this in this big pod and they monitor his his vital signs and his activity, his his brain waves and his heart, his heartbeat. <laughs> and then maybe like like an hour or two before the debate starts, they press a button and the pod opens up. Shh. <laughs> Biden wakes up from a, from a deep sleep, <laughs> rejuvenated, ready to go, to go the distance with Trump during the debate. <laughs> uh, Trump joked, joked about, about this as well, that Biden needs a week to prepare for the debate. Unbelievable, huh? He needs a week to prepare for the debate. <laughs> I think when I was in university, I don't think I studied a week before an exam ever, <laughs> maybe like, like a day before the exam, not even during finals did I, did I start preparing for the exam a week ahead of time. <laughs> it's make or break for Biden in this debate. It's make or break. If he makes it through the debate, then uh, they're going to stick with Biden. And all Biden has to do, the bar has been set so low for Biden, all he has to do is make it through the debate not freeze up, not mumble. That's all he has to do. That's, that's the bar that has been set for, for the professor. If he can accomplish that, then, then they're gonna stick with Biden. If he freezes, stumbles and mumbles, then according to the Daily Mail, Obama, Hillary, who else, uh, Pelosi and Schumer, they're going to, to tell Biden, step aside, and they're going to look for someone younger and more dynamic. Maybe Gavin Newsom. Maybe they'll convince Michelle Obama. I don't know. Maybe they'll go with Kamala. Who knows? Maybe Alensky. He may be looking for a job. I can run as president. <laughs> I'm illegitimate president in Ukraine anyway. I can become legitimate president of America. What do you think, Padoliak? <laughs> oh, boy. Let's talk about Farage and the freakout around Farage. What a meltdown. Just because Farage said provoked. He said provoked. That's it. <laughs> and we're seeing a massive freakout <laughs> over Farage saying that the war was provoked. An epic freakout that's happening in the UK. And uh, good on Farage. Good on Farage because he wrote an article in the Telegraph with the title, The West's errors in Ukraine have been catastrophic. I won't apologize for telling the truth. Good on you, Farage. What did I say yesterday? Don't back down, Farage. If you back down, if you apologize, then you're done. You're cooked. The minute you apologize to them, that's when they really go after you. You have to, you have to stay your ground, man. Stick to what you, what you say and don't walk it back. And that's what Farage did in this article. Good on you, Farage. Respect, man. Whether you like Farage or hate Farage, you have to respect him for putting out this article and saying, I am not going to apologize for saying the word provoked. I'm not going to apologize for saying the word provoked. Let me read you just one paragraph from this article that he wrote in the Daily Telegraph. There is no easy solution to the war, but facing up to the truth about the causes and consequences must be a start. That is why I simply want to tell it as it is and have done for a decade. Those slanderers who claim that telling the truth makes me a mouthpiece for Putin only reveal the weakness of their own case. Well said. Well said. Alexander sent me this article uh, this morning, and, uh, and he said that, uh, that's, that Farage is, is not backing down. He is not walking back his, his comments, and that's huge. That is huge. That means he believes in what he says. And in this article, Farage talks about how, uh, look, he says, I'm, I'm not a friend of Putin. I've never been a friend of Putin or Russia, which is true. He's never complimented Putin or Russia, ever. Actually, the reverse. He said bad things about Putin and Russia. 
I don't think he's gotten to the point of, of thug, but maybe he said dictator. Maybe he said that Putin is a dictator. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, Farage said that it's time for the, for the West to be honest, to be honest about the conflict in Ukraine. If, if the West is not honest about the conflict in Ukraine, the fact that Ukraine is losing, the fact that the UK, I think Farage put the tab at 15 billion or 16 billion in, in money that has been given to Project Ukraine, if, we're, if the West is not honest about uh, the situation in Ukraine, then there's never going to be a solution. And that was the point that he was making in this article. And the West has to be honest about the history of Ukraine and how we ended up where, where we are. So, Farage, well done. Well done, but they continue to attack you, Farage. They continue to attack you. And this is from the mail, the Sunday mail. They put out an article, a cover, to their newspaper with the title, Elensky, Farage is infected with virus of Putin. With virus of Putin, let's see here. Ukraine's leaders, Ukraine leaders fury after reform chief blames West for war as we expose parties pro Kremlin backer. Oh man, you're telling me that, that all this time I've been talking about an Alensky curse when in reality we have a virus of Putin? <laughs> man. Wow. Eh, Podoliak, you, you listen to what this fromage guy say to, uh, to media, to BBC. You listen to what he say that this war is uh, provoked, Podoliak. Uh, yes, Mr. President, I saw that interview on the BBC. Podoliak, I think this fromage guy is... Uh, is He's infected with virus of the Putin. Yes, he's infected with virus of the Putin. <laughs> probably, Mr. President. Probably. God knows the Alensky curse has done a lot of damage. <laughs> I think cure to virus of Putin is Alensky number five. Maybe we send box of Elensky number five to this fromage guy. This will cure him from virus. <laughs> 20% discount. Use code green t-shirt. <laughs> the virus of Putin. <laughs> we do live in a clown world. Yes, we are in clown world territory, everybody. We are in clown world territory. Oh, boy. Pierce Morgan put out uh, a post on Twitter X uh, referencing the BBC article, West Provoked Ukraine's War, Nigel Farage says. And uh, Pierce Morgan, he wrote on Twitter X, Putin's little puppet, shameful. That's what Pierce Morgan posted on Twitter X. That's amazing, Pierce. How did you come up with that one? Putin's little puppet. I see what you're doing there, Putin puppet. That's incredible. How did, how did Pierce Morgan think of that? I've never heard that one before. I've never, ever heard that one before. I've heard uh, Kremlin stooge. I've heard Putin stooge. But Putin puppet. P, Putin. Puppet, P, 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 P Putin puppet. Kind of has a, a, a rhyme to it, doesn't it? Pierce Morgan, man. How did you come up with that? That's brilliant. That is brilliant. You see, that is why Pierce Morgan gets paid the big bucks. That is why he gets paid the big moolah, the big money. Because he comes up with, with the, the, these types of, of posts. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Pierce Morgan, Putin's puppet. Pierce Morgan is Sunak's sock puppet. You see what I did there? Sunak sock. 
Pierce Morgan is Sunak's sock puppet. <laughs> it rhymes, right? Pierce, <laughs> it rhymes. You see, I can do it too. <laughs> very insightful from Pierce Morgan. Very, very unique, very clever. Putin's little puppet. Pierce Morgan is Sunak's little sock puppet. <laughs> Sunak's little sock puppet. That's a nice, nice ring to it, doesn't it? So Guy Verhofstadt, he put out a Twitter X post. I talked about this yesterday in my video. He said, with regards to Farage, the mask slips. These are Kremlin talking points. In the European Parliament, Farage always defended Putin. That was what Guy Verhofstadt posted on Twitter yesterday. And then Richard comes along. I don't know Richard. I think I follow Richard on Twitter X. You should follow Richard on Twitter X because he crushes Guy Verhofstadt. And he has a video of Guy Verhofstadt at the Maidan in 2014. Richard says, hey Guy, is this you spreading hatred on the Maidan Square in 2014? Well done, Richard. Well done. Let's get into some real clown world territory now. <laughs> that was just the, the appetizer. <laughs> that was the warm up. Now let's talk about some real clown world uh, stories. And we have to start off with, how about Millet? Millet was in Spain and they gifted Millet, I don't know who gifted him this, but they gifted Millet a, a painting of Millet. <laughs> a painting of Millet, like the painting of, of King Charles. But this was a better painting, the King Charles in, in like all red. They gifted Millet this huge painting. Millet was in tears as he saw the painting of himself. And, uh, you know, I saw the painting. I kind of I kind of like art. I kind of know a thing or two <laughs> about art. But, I mean, I saw that painting. And you know what, what popped into my head, immediately popped into my head? Not only King Charles and that painting, but uh, I thought to myself when I saw that painting of Millet, I thought... Ghostbusters 2. <laughs> Ghostbusters 2. What was that painting called? Uh, Ver Vigo. Vigo the Carpathian. <laughs> Vigo the Carpathian. That's what I thought of when I saw that, uh, <laughs> that portrait of Millet. <laughs> Millet the... The Argentinian Vigo the Carpathian in Ghostbusters 2. Oh, man. <laughs> Funny stuff, man. Funny stuff. Oh, boy. Let's uh, actually let's walk up instead of down. So one more clown world story and we'll wrap this, this video up. And uh, Sir Rod Stewart, I didn't know he was a sir, but Sir Rod Stewart was giving a concert in Budapest. And once again, he broke out the Alensky video as he was singing, what was the, what's the song called? I think Rhythm of My Heart is the song, but uh, he had a, this huge screen and as he's singing his song, a huge video of Alensky pops up. <laughs> and the crowd in Budapest predictably boos. They booed big time. From what I understand, Stuart was wearing the colors of the Ukrainian flag as well as he was singing this song. <laughs> and the crowd booing. Oh, Rod Stewart. <laughs> Rod Stewart. Maybe you should stop dedicating the song to the green man in, in Kiev, the green t-shirt man in Kiev, because it's obviously not, not a crowd favorite. <laughs> it's not winning you more fans, Sir Rod. Anyway, that's the video, everybody. TheDuran.Locals.com. We are on 
Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, Twitter X, and, and a whole bunch more platforms. Every platform. We're all over the place. Go to the Durant shop. Pick up some merch. The link is in the description box down below. And if you like this video, give me a like. If you don't like this video, give me a dislike. <laughs> Just interact with the video. Helps out the algorithm. <laughs>